Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the campaign office uh, for Paul Merriman and Jelaine McLeod. And what a great day for us to be in this great province of Saskatchewan. And a few minutes ago, I had the opportunity to visit our Lieutenant Governor, the Honorable Russ Morasti, and I asked him to dissolve the 29th Legislature, which will start the campaign for the election on October the 28th. <laughs> I would say the choice for that election could never be more clear. Who will keep our economy strong and our, our future bright? And that will be the ballot question for Saskatchewan people on October 28th. That is the choice that voters will have between the Saskatchewan party and the NDP. The Saskatchewan party, we will be running on our record. And the NDP, well, they'll be running away from their record. Our record is one that is built and focused on growth and all of the benefits that can come from that growth. More people, more jobs, a growing economy means that we're able to invest in education, in health, in our community safety. It means that we can build more schools, more hospitals, and fix more highways from corner to corner to corner to corner in this province. It means that we can have the great quality of life that Saskatchewan people have come to expect and Saskatchewan people deserve. Well, the NDP record is just quite the opposite. It's a record of decline, loss, and closure. Driving away people, driving away jobs and, and opportunities for us and more importantly for our children. Closing schools and hospitals is their record. Raising taxes is their record. Letting our highways crumble. And losing a generation of young people to other provinces across this nation. Decline, loss, and closure. That is not only the NDP record, but I would say that that is the plan that they are putting forward. And let's never go back to those days. So the Saskatchewan party will run on our record, but we just aren't running on that record alone. We have a plan, a plan for a strong economy and a plan for a brighter future. And that plan starts with keeping life more affordable for all who live here. So today, Saskatchewan is the most affordable place in Canada to live. And we have the lowest inflation rate. But Saskatchewan people and Saskatchewan families, they're, they're feeling those cost of living pressures just like everyone else is across this nation. And that's why your Saskatchewan party government delivers annually over $2 billion in affordability, in affordability measures. We deliver that year after year after year. And that's why this year we took the Trudeau NDP carbon tax off your home heating bill. That's why, in the days ahead, the Saskatchewan party is going to announce a, a number of new actions that will make life more affordable for everyone that lives in Saskatchewan. But I would say, why wait? This is our first big campaign event. It's the first day of the campaign, so let's make our first big campaign announcement right now. And I commit to the people of this great province that a re-elected Saskatchewan party government will make life more affordable by delivering the largest income tax reduction seen since 2008. How will we do this, you might ask? Well, we will do this by increasing the personal exemption increasing the spousal exemption, increasing the child exemption, and increasing the senior supplement by $500 each year for the next four years. Right we will also continue to index Saskatchewan income tax rates at the rate of inflation, which means that the tax reduction when combined with all of this and ind indexation will save a family of four about $3,400 and will save a senior's couple about $3,100 over the next four years. This is significantly more than any temporary gas tax reduction that the NDP or anyone else is committing to. And, 
And just as importantly, it's not temporary. It will remain in place, saving each and every Saskatchewan person money each and every year into the future. Did you know that under the NDP, a family of four in this province, they began paying the provincial income tax at a family income of just over $26,150 each year. Remember that number, $26,150. Under an NDP government, that's when you started paying income tax. When this plan, our plan, is fully implemented, that same family in this province would not pay provincial income tax until their combined income reached seventy two thousand dollars that's the highest tax-free threshold in the nation of Canada as I said the Saskatchewan party has a record and we have a plan and our record is one of reducing taxes from the very crushing levels that were here under the NDP we reduced the education property tax after province-wide tax revolts under yes the NDP we reduced the small business tax. We took the Trudeau NDP carbon tax off Saskatchewan residents' home heating bill. And we previously reduced provincial income tax, which removed 112,000 people from the provincial tax rolls altogether. Well, now, if re-elected, a Saskatchewan party plan, when fully implemented, would mean another 54,000 people would re be removed from the sus paying Saskatchewan income tax in any way. A total of 166,000 people would not pay provincial income tax in this province compared to under the NDP. A Saskatchewan, yes. And our great province will have the highest level of tax-free income in the nation of Canada for seniors, for families that are living with their children. A re-elected Saskatchewan party government will also make life more affordable for low to moderate income individuals and families by increasing the Saskatchewan low income tax credit by 20% over the next four years. This, this provincial tax credit is delivered automatically each and every three months. It's associated with the GST credit to all of those who qualify, which are primarily people who are not earning enough to pay provincial income tax. So this means this, that today's announcement, when fully implemented, benefits every person in the province of Saskatchewan, each and every Saskatchewan citizen. So that's the first large and significant difference in this election. The NDP is promising a small temporary tax measure, making life more affordable. The NDP is promising a small temporary tax measure that excludes anyone who might not drive. The Saskatchewan party will deliver a significant ongoing tax reduction for everyone. So the answer is very, very clear. Making life more affordable for Saskatchewan people. It's part of our plan for a strong economy and a bright future. Thank you very much, everybody. And let's hit the campaign trail. should be counted by hand, and that's our belief, and that's what will happen this election. Did you, 
did the process go smooth in Alberta? I think not. And so we, we firmly believe that if, if Saskatchewan citizens are going to cast a ballot by hand, that very same ballot um, deserves the respect to be counted by hand. And that's where we are at this point in time. Yeah. We're, we're, we're yeah, have you asked them that? Because uh, they've they've not indicated how they're going to pay for four billion dollars, and their record, yeah, yeah their their record would say in previous elections uh, that they're they're not very good at adding this up, and I d doubt whether they will be this time. We, on the other hand, have always come out with our fully costed platform which will include uh, when and it, when we would uh, balance the budget in the province in the future years. And so that will be coming in the next number of days, but we will be bringing forward a fully costed platform, including uh, today's uh, significant and largest income tax reduction since 2008 that will benefit each and every person in the province of Saskatchewan, each and every family in the province of Saskatchewan, unlike uh, any temporary gas tax relief. Yeah, we'll be releasing all of those figures. Um, I, what I would say, though, is uh, when you release your fully costed platform, um, which we always do, um, and then we will helpfully cost uh, the opposition's platform as well, uh, because they, in, in previous elections, they, they haven't been able uh, to get that to an accurate point. The, there's three ways to pay for spending commitments, and today is a, an income tax reduction. Um, which is different than a spending commitment, but there's three ways. You raise taxes, you increase your debt, or you cancel capital projects like the Urgent Care Centre here in Saskatoon or the St. Paul's edition or the, the Park Aid at the our Regina General Hospital in Regina or the Urgent Care Centre there or the Victoria Hospital. That's what you do and that's what we're hearing so far the NDP are focusing on is cancelling capital projects which are one-time projects and are not going to be there the next year to recoup those dollars um, but we will have a fully costed platform in the days ahead um, and we would hope that the NDP will at least try to cost their platform this time. Right. But, yeah, I've been, been, been in discussions for some period of time on a nursing task force and on ensuring that we're including um, all of the nursing designations or, or, or credentialed uh, nursing designations that we have or disciplines that we have um, so that we can really focus on a, a patient's first nursing task force. And it, this is about the patients uh, and about creating a healthy work environment, certainly so that uh, the services uh, can be offered to create uh, you know, that recruitment and retention uh, environment so those services can be offered in community after community because it's always the intent of this government to uh, be at least preserving the services we have and maybe even expanding the services that we have like we are in Prince Albert, like we have with the urgent care centers uh, that are open in Regina and soon to be in, in, in Saskatoon. But we want all of the nursing designations to be at that table. That's what the discussion has centered on over the last number of months. Um, and now uh, we've announced that most certainly we'll be moving forward to that if we have the honour to form government. How do you, uh, how do you plan on balancing the budget for the people here in Saskatchewan? We'll, we'll have a fully costed platform which will also uh, indicate in what years uh, the, the, balance, the, the balanced budget will arrive here in Saskatchewan. Um, and I would say that that is a, a fair question. Uh, for us and we'll be bringing forward that information in the next number of days and I would say that the other parties need to as well because what we see uh, today is a fully uncosted platform put forward by the opposition with over four billion dollars not in tax incentives but actually in 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 spending commitments um, which are not sustainable moving forward this, this this is their record whether it be in campaign time or whether it be when they're in government uh, that leads to decline loss and closure you will hear about some very targeted initiatives in the next few days that are uh, helping Saskatchewan people with the affordability inflationary challenges that we're experiencing. Again, our province has the, the lowest cost of living in the nation. Our province has the lowest inflation rate in the nation, but we are still uh, feeling the cost of living pressures that other Canadians are. And that's why uh, today's announcement is so very significant. The largest income tax reduction since 2008, taking a further 54,000 people off the, the, the provincial tax rolls altogether. A total now of 166,000 people that did pay income tax under the NDP are not going to be paying income tax under Saskatchewan party government if we have the honour to form government on October the 28th.
confident in our ability to campaign during the election period. We have 61 dynamic, innovative candidates in ridings across, including uh, here in Saskatoon, uh, but in ridings across the province. Um, but it, it's an election, and we live in a democracy, and this is now the opportunity for Saskatchewan people to make a choice. And it, it's, it's not a referendum, it's a choice between what the polling says are two parties that can form government. One uh, party that uh, their record and their plan leads to decline, loss and closure. We've seen that in years gone by and I would suggest you would see it again if they had the opportunity to govern or the Saskatchewan party uh, which most certainly is focused on growing our economy so that we can build that brighter future for those that live here today but to ensure that our children can stay here years and decades into the future. It's an exciting time. This is the fun part. that difference. Um, as I said, uh, in Saskatchewan, uh, we have the lowest cost of living today, the lowest inflationary rate. Um, now we have the highest tax-free threshold. Um, and for those that might be working at the lower income spectrum or minimum wage, they're not paying provincial income tax in this province. And then today, um, or sorry, pardon me, if, if we were to form government on October the 28th, we would add to the already 112,000 people that are not paying income tax, that did pay income tax under the NDP, another 54,000 for a total of 166,000 people not paying income tax. So the take-home pay for those very families uh, would be larger in Saskatchewan than it is anywhere else in the nation of Canada. Yeah. The economy is how we make those investments in health care and make those investments uh, in education and investments in, in community safety. And you've seen a number of those. Um, if you just go back to last year's budget, a 9% lift to our operating education budget. 28 schools are being built uh, across the province today, either in the planning or, or building stages or recently completed. We have investments in the PA Victoria Hospital, which is going to add uh, about 500 additional staff for the expanded service delivery for not only the city of Prince Albert and the people that, that live there, but for all of the families throughout northern Saskatchewan that use that, that facility. We're seeing the highest tax threshold in the nation of Canada, meaning that families uh, take more home each and every year. All of this is only possible. Those investments in health care, the nurse task force, all of those are only possible when you have a strong, growing and vibrant economy. And that's how we will continue to build a brighter future for more Saskatchewan residents in the future than even lived here in the past, as we are a growing province. Um, and it's been a long time coming and it's here today. Well, what, what I would say is, is I would separate the discussion around climate change and carbon taxation. Uh, you know, as climate is changing, and it is always changing, we most certainly are investing. And you've seen those investments with an aligned SPSA or Saskatchewan uh, Public S or P Protective uh, Service Agency um, and how they're responding uh, together now in, in a much more aligned fashion uh, to what the, the, uh, the, the natural disasters that we may face from time to time, whether that be forest fires in the last couple of years, years previous to that, uh, there was some floods, some flooding in areas as well. And so we have an aligned uh, organization that can respond uh, to families' concerns and to communities' concerns in that space. Carbon taxation fixes none of this. And we, we've said that from the get-go with respect to, and this is where we differ very much from the other party that could potentially form government in this province, and that's the NDP because they have uh, consistently, the NDP have propped up Justin Trudeau in his application and expansion and increase in the amount of the carbon tax on Saskatchewan residents. And so I separate those two parts of the, question, of the equation. Pardon me?
We talk about we talk about what Saskatchewan industries and people are doing when it comes to uh, the, the, the carbon environment and the carbon conversation each and every year. This is why we were in Dubai this last year. We produce the most the most sustainable products that you can find on earth. Our, our, our canola and wheat, for example, has a 65% lower carbon content on a per ton basis than the next seven largest producers. Potash in Saskatchewan, half the carbon content than the next largest producers around the world. And so when we talk about the most sustainable products and making choices around purchasing the most sustainable products, most certainly uh, the world needs to buy more Saskatchewan. That's why we were at COP28 this past year, was, it was putting uh, not only what we produce in Saskatchewan on full display, but how we produce it from a, from a climate change and from a carbon perspective. We have what the world needs and we produce it how the world wants. And so that's where we are today whether it be with our oil, our potash, our uranium, our, our agri agricultural products, and we're preparing for where we need to be tomorrow uh, with the Rare Earth Elements Processing Facility right here in Saskatoon, which will help stimulate the rare earth mining industry in this province, in Western Canada, and in North America. And so Saskatchewan has what the world needs today, has what the world will need tomorrow, and we're doing it more sustainably than anywhere else. And that is what we have put forward each and every day. Um, as a government, that's what we'll put forward uh, during this campaign, and we would ask the NDP um, to join us in selling Saskatchewan's wares rather than holding these industries back by supporting a Trudeau government implementing policies not just like the carbon tax but the clean electricity standard as well as a number of another a number of other suite of policies that are harmful to how we create wealth and how we create the most sustainable products in the world. The last questions, guys. Yeah, I think we started last year we were in Saskatoon on day one as well. And so it's not uncommon for us to be in what is the largest city in the province. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you. Thanks everyone. Probably aware of the changes to help the um, you know, I, I think the plans that we would have with healthcare would, I, could, I would point you to our record. Uh, you know, about a 10% increase in healthcare this year, a record of building a Jim Potence and Children's Hospital right in this city, a record of building a new and expanded Victoria Hospital in the city of Prince Albert to service not only uh, Prince Albert, but to service uh, Montreal Lake, to service La Ronge, to service uh, the entirety of our province's north, a Moose Jaw Hospital, a Weyburn Hospital. Uh, what you've seen uh, in this province is an, an investment not only in the capital infrastructure, but an investment uh, through the most ambitious health human resource plan in the nation of Canada, in the people that are offering those services. My friends, your friends, my family, likely your family as well, uh, that are working in our healthcare sector. That's our record, and that's what I think you'll see in the future. I haven't discussed a major restructure. What we have talked about is how we can ensure that patients are receiving the care that they expect.